Welcome back to Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh, and I'm your host for this program today. Josine Hurd, to my right, has been with us in several episodes before. Both Josine and I have braved the cold outside to be here, including our director, Danny Darrow, and our facilitator and studio manager, Rich Spezial. We're all here as a team to put this episode together for you because we want to teach you how to relax. Today we're going to take you through a very a mini sequence of postures that will help you relax. Literally, it will help you move the body and to still the mind. It will help you calm the mind. The very slow, undulating motions, wave-like motions, anything that will help you slow down. We all need that every now and then. Mm -hmm. Jersey and actually before we proceed, we're going to take you through about 10 to 12 postures before we go ahead. Tell me, do you think we have a lot, too much tension in our lives these oh, days? Too much stress. Too much stress? Too much stress. And you know what, stress actually affects the mind, but it also manifests itself in the body, oh, yeah. right? The tension gets feel? right here in the neck. Exactly. That's what I wanted to hear. And right. On and hurts. Right. We sit on the computer all the time. We want to ease that tension. And when we get stressed, what happens is we think we have a migraine, but what's happening is really the muscles are getting knotted up. Oh, yeah. So you feel that at the base of your neck, right? You feel like so stiff. Right. Ooh. You feel stiff, all tight. <laughs> so what we want to do is take our viewers through a little mini sequence of postures that will help not only open up your chest, it will also do a few twists, but everything in very slow, controlled extended motions so in fact we're going to do two adaptations we're going to do all seated prone and supine two of the standing postures we're not going to stand up today we want to help you relax so what we're going to do is we're going to adapt two standing postures while we are seated because the idea is to move the upper body not to move the legs when you start moving the legs there's too much activity we want to slow slow the body down so here's what we're going to do there's a posture call and you can set Notice how Josian and I are both sitting in two different two different ways. Josian is sitting in Sukhasan, which is a variation of Padmasana. She's got her legs crossed. I usually sit on my heels because it helps me bring my torso up. We all have different anatomical proportions. My torso, my legs may be a little longer than my torso. Josian has a long torso, so she's comfortable the way she's sitting. Before we do those adaptations, I want you to understand we have a lot of support for you at home. We have a fridge magnet with a simple ailment-specific sequence called 48 plus, 48 basic postures that target 32 major muscle groups, glands, and organs to address eight common ailments in under 20 minutes a day. If we have 20 minutes a day to stretch, I'm sure you can find the same 20 minutes. We all go by the same clock, right? We all have a 24-hour clock. We also have a postcard for you with the same sequence. Put this in your handbag, stick this on a fridge. It's also a bookmark, so you could do that. You could put it inside a book. Whatever you do, don't give yourself or us any excuses not to stretch. You also have a book called Yoga Secrets, which we will give you a copy of only if you come on our show. No appearance, no book, and no postcard and magnet either. We'll also give you a copy of the Sun Salutation poster now. Enough of housekeeping, just want you to know you can watch us on the same channel, Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35, Mondays through Fridays at 1.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time. I'm not sure which is my camera, but viewers know that we are talking to you, we're addressing you. You can watch us five days in the week, and the two days at the week on the weekend, give yourself a break or try and recap the postures that you've been practicing with us. We also have a website, yogaexpress.com, Y-O-G-A-X-P-R-E-S-S. Josine, can you tell me from the monitor, am I looking at that one or this camera? I think when you look at this one, you... This one is better? No, this one. All right, good. We have a blog as well, yogaexpress.blogspot.com, Y-O-G-A-X-P-R-E-S-S.blogspot.com. You should be able to visit us on both those uh, site and blog to get more details of our program as well and also about our stretches. Now we're going to take you through two standing variations. So we're going to sit down and vary two standing postures. One of them is Ardha Chandra, half moon. Here's what we're going to do. Typically when we stand up, our feet are together, heels together, toes slightly apart. Now 
This time, and arms are inhaled, they go up. This time, we're just gonna work the upper body. So inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down, keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together in any manner you've been trained. You could cross your fingers over, index fingers out, or just keep your palms nice and flat. I like to cross my fingers over. I notice Josiane has her fingers flat. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Take your biceps behind your ears, open up your chest. Close your eyes for just a few seconds. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Now, take a deep inhale. As you exhale, dip your torso to the right. Then inhale, come back to the center. Exhale to the left, inhale back to the center. Now, inhale, exhale to the right. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale and release. Bring your arms, palms in front of your chest. Palms are facing down. This time, there's not going to be many, much hip movement in the seated variation of Kati Chakra. Kati Chakra is spinning wheel. What we're going to do is we're going to exhale and swing our right arm out all the way back. Inhale, bring the right arm back in. Then exhale the left arm out. Inhale, bring it back in. Let's try that. And we'll do it twice. And we'll see if we can take, in the second round, we'll see if we can take our hips with us. First round, keep your hips where they are. Take a deep breath in. Exhale to the right. Inhale back to the center. Exhale to the left. Inhale back to the center. Now, Josiane sitting cross-legged. I'm not sure if it's going to be easy for her to take her hips with her. But knowing Josiane, she's going to find a way to do that. So I'm going to try and take my hips with me this time. Exhale to the right. Inhale back to the center. Exhale to the left. Actually, it didn't make a difference for either of us because it was hard even sitting the way I am taking our hips but the idea is just to swing your arms out when we are standing the hips are more fluid exhale relax bring your arms down now we're going to skip the cat position which is also very relaxing because we did that yesterday we're going to take you straight into shashank or rabbit rabbit is very similar to child posture in that you need to sit on your heels in fact some some schools even call this the child posture the school where i trained called this calls us the rabbit posture or shashank. Sit on your heels, knees are close together. You wanna to make sure whenever you want to relax, you wanna make sure, especially when you're sitting on your heels, you wanna make sure the knees are close. You can bring your knees out, in which case your body goes even deeper. You can relax wonderfully well, but you may wanna keep your palms by your side. But we're not gonna go into that one today. We're gonna to go into rabbit. That was just a demo, you could do that. That also helps us relax. But let's sit with our knees close together. Inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Hi Gloria, exhale, fold from the hip with a nice straight back. Very slow, controlled motion. Place your palms flat on the mat in front of you make sure that your lower abdomen presses against your upper thighs and try to keep your hips down now once your palms are all the way down wiggle your fingers further away from you and very gently place your forehead on the mat bring your palms together inhale let's come up Exhale and release. We're gonna go into head to knee, Janu Sisha. Let's sit on our buttocks first and extend the right leg out in front of us. Make sure you flex your right foot. You wanna make sure your leg is nice and extended. Bend your left leg at the knee. Make sure that your left knee is at an L with the extended leg. So attach the sole of your left foot to the inside of your upper right thigh. So left leg is a, right leg is extended, so twist your body to face the extended leg. Inhale your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, 
palms facing in. Exhale and fold from the hip. Janu Sirsha. Sirsha is head. Janu is knee. Literally, it's head to knee. Keep exhaling. My head, my forehead does not touch my knee yet today. It may never touch. But the idea is I'm going to make the effort. I'm going to try every day to get a little deeper. Every time you exhale, it'll help you go a little deeper in your forward fold. If you really want to feel that connection, you can bend your right leg at the knee. You should be able to touch your forehead to your knee, just to be able to give the name Janu Sirsha some extra value. But you know what? I want to feel the stretch. I don't mind if my forehead doesn't touch today. It will one of these days. Inhale, bring your arms up. Exhale and release. Let's switch legs. Extend the left leg out. Bend the right leg at the knee. Flex your extended foot, ex the foot on your extended leg. And make sure that your right knee is bent at, a t at an L to your extended leg. So you want to make sure the right knee is way out. You don't want to bring it too close. Attach the sole of your right foot to the inside of your upper left thigh. Twist your body to the left to face the extended leg. So you want to make sure you're nice and secure. Now, inhale your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together, exhale and fold from the hip with a nice straight back. Once you've made that connection, if you want to experiment, feel free to bend your left knee so your forehead touches your knee now if it doesn't touch it's okay because as long as you have made some kind of connection with your hands over the soles of your feet for now you are going to feel nice and relaxed and also if you hold these postures for a little longer than usual you will feel a wonderful wonderful sense of relaxation a sense of calming come over you hold Clasp your palms together. Let's come up. Keep your palms, keep your arms overhead where they are and extend the right leg out. Paschimottanasana. Paschimottan is bird beak. I know Josian likes to be a dodo bird and I'm going to be a hummingbird. <laughs> Think of any bird in your mind and when you fold over, just imagine that you are that bird that's just folding over the beak of that bird. Exhale and fold from the hip. If your palms come over the soles of your feet, that's great. If you want to hold on to your big toes, right big toe with your right hand, left big toe with your left hand, you can do that and that'll help you pull your body forward. Keep your elbows close to your knees. Keep exhaling. Keep your feet flexed. You should feel a wonderful stretch in the back of your legs and in your whole spine the back of your whole spine the spinal extensors get a beautiful release clasp your palms together let's come up with a nice straight back inhale now exhale and release another posture that's wonderful for holding the mind still for keeping the mind in one spot go mukha asan go is cow mukha is face cow face now we'll help you understand why it's called cow face, but let's get into the posture first. Tuck your left heel under the right buttock, and you wanna make sure that the sole of your feet face the back of your room or your studio, wherever you are. <laughs> Josian's already in that. Cross your right leg over the left knee, and make sure that this is a little different to Ardha Matsyendra, where your, the foot that's crossing over is flat. In this one, you want the soles of both your feet to face the back. So you want to do that. So that way you're also helping stretch the ankles. I'm gonna wiggle my left foot forward just a little bit. Now I've heard some teachers tell me that the knees, when they sit a line on top of each other, especially the way Josie is sitting, looks like the mouth of a cow. Now, when the arm goes up, the bent elbow looks like the ear of a cow. Whichever way you look at it, it's supposed to remind you of a cow. So right knee is up, left arm goes up. Inhale, 
Exhale, dip your left hand behind the back of your neck and place, secure your palm right there, just over your trapezius. Then take, swing your right arm from behind, hold on, clasp the opposite fingers and hold. Once you've made that connection, lift your chest up and bring your chin up and hold. Now, if you want to feel nice and calm and relaxed, and notice how this raised elbow is supposed to remind you of the ear of a cow. You want to feel a little more of that calm sensation? Close your eyes and keep breathing. Don't forget to breathe. Release the hands first, and then let's switch legs. Let's cross over. Now, this time we're going to tuck the right heel under the left buttock, Left foot goes over the right knee. I find that the left side of my body cooperates a little more in this fold. Do you find that one side is more cooperative, one side is easier than the other? It depends. It depends on which posture it is. Yes. Good, good point. Yes, it depends on which posture. For In balanced postures, it may be totally different because balance is, involves a lot of uh, a concentration, but in the seated folds, I find the left side of my body cooperates a little more. So I guess you're right. You're so right. I never thought of it that way. So try to align your left knee over your right knee. Make sure the soles of both your feet are facing the back of the room. Open up your chest. Left knee is up. Right arm goes up. Inhale. Exhale. Dip the right hand behind your neck. And then take your left hand from behind. Wrap it around. Clasp the opposite fingers and hold. Once you've made that connection, try to bring your raised elbow nice and up and lift your chin and chest up and hold. If you want to go deeper into this posture and feel totally relaxed, close your eyes. Keep breathing. Don't forget to breathe. Release the arms first and then the legs. And I know you would have loved to go into pigeon, but we're going to skip that. We did that yesterday. Did it, yes. Let's go directly into Maha Mudra. Maha Mudra. Maha is grand. Mudra is gesture. It's a full forward fold of the whole body with our hands behind our back. So literally with our hands tied behind our back. How's that? Now, no, let's clasp. You could do the hands in prayer. Why don't you turn around and show them? You could... Take, take, clasp your opposite hands and you could do it in two ways. You could have it in prayer position the way Josian has it now, both your palms clasped behind you, or you could cross over and hold on to the opposite elbows. Whatever you do, make sure you help open up your chest. The moment you open up your chest, it helps you enhance your lung power, but it also helps you release any tension in your trapezius muscles. Trapezius are the muscles at the base of your neck, in the back of your neck. So hold, very nice Josie, and I'm going to try and do that too. The, it's called the reverse prayer, reverse prayer posture. So you want to keep clasp your palms together. Now folding over, if you want to fold over in this position, for me it's a little hard to fold over with my palms clasped, but I've seen Josie and do that. So I'm going to cross over and hold on to my opposite elbows. You want to exhale and fold from the hip. Try to keep your buttocks down. Very gently place your forehead on the floor. Make sure your buttocks also stay down as far as, as long as you can. Inhale, engage your low back muscles to come up. Keep your back nice and straight. Exhale and release. Josie, and I know you're dying to do the boat, but that won't help us relax, so we're gonna <laughs> skip that today. Josian loves the boat, the seated balance posture at seven minutes. Great, thank you, Rich. We're gonna go into Baddha Kona. Baddha Kona, bound angle or cobbler. Cobblers in India literally sit in this posture and I've actually taken pictures of them doing that. They keep the soles of their feet nice and tight towards each other. They have this long iron nail right there and then they place your footwear on it and keep banging on it till they get your <laughs> footwear nice and uh, you know well repaired. But basically, this is how they sit all day. So what you want to do is place the soles of your feet together, clasp both your feet with your hands, and once you've made that connection, you want to push your knees down. So when you bring your knees down, it brings your torso up. It actually releases any tension in your hips as well. If you find bringing your knees down is a little hard, 
You may want to sit on a block or a towel, anything that'll give you a little bit of height, which will open up your torso. It'll open up the hips as well and help you lift up. Let's hold that. Let's see if we can just fold over from this in this posture. Keep your knees down. Exhale with a nice straight back. Fold over. You may want to bring your elbows out to the side. If you find your knees are riding back up, push them down with your elbows and keep going down. Keep exhaling. You should. There's a wonderful stretch in your abductor muscles, the outside of your thighs. Inhale, let's come up. Oh, that feels good. Let's go directly into Mala Asan. Mala is garland. We're going to come up. It's a seated squat. We're going to come up and sit down in a squat. Heels are closer than the toes. And once you're sitting down, once you're nice and secure, place your palms together and push your knees out with your elbows and hold. Lift your chin up. Inhale, take a nap. Close your eyes. Inhale and exhale. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale. Very gently release your posture. Extend your legs out in front of you. I think we're doing extremely well for time today because we had, we had seven minutes, about three minutes back. So we've got four minutes left, I think, approximately. Have your feet, legs extended out in front of you. Flex your feet. So make sure your feet are nice and upright. Place both your palms to the left of your hips. So you want to place one palm as closer to the upper left part of your thigh, left thigh. The other hand goes behind your hips. So once you have placed your palms nice and secure, you want to turn over to the left, exhale, and fold. Now if you find folding over is hard with your hands too close to your body as it is for me, you may want to bring your hands a little further away from the body. That'll help you dip a little deeper. Make sure your right hip stays on the floor. Exhale and dip. This posture is called Supta Namaskara, supine prayer. Inhale, let's come up. Was it Supta? Yeah, Supta Parivrata. This is supine prayer. Now, let's twist on the other side. Place your palms a little further away from your hips if you want to try and go a little deeper. Exhale and dip. Even though this is the start of this posture is from a seated position, it's called supine prayer because you're basically dipping your forehead or you're attempting to dip your forehead to the ground. So it's a prayer position and you're seated. But you're all, actually, you know, if you want to experience a supine part of it, you want to take your hands further behind you, try and dip. Inhale, let's come up. Out of that posture and let's go directly into prone position, Manduk Asan, the frog position. You want to come on hands and feet first as we would do in a cat and then very gently lower your elbows to the floor, clasp your hands together, curl your toes in. What you want to do is lift your buttocks up and exhale, inhale and exhale through the abdominal region. So you want to use belly breathing. Take one more deep breath. A lot of exhales. Exhales help you relax. They help you detox. We're going to come in supine position. You don't want to, do you want to do this? Two minutes, perfect. Let's do supine. We'll have to skip the locust. <laughs> Let's do the supine ones. Legs raised, bit beneath the karani. You need inversion or legs up the wall. There are lots of different names. Legs raised, legs, legs up the wall. And then we have one, two, three, four. I think we should be able to do all four. Okay. Extend your legs out in front of you. Place your palms under your buttocks. Uh, place your hands under your buttocks with your palms flat on the ground. Feet are flexed. Inhale. Engage your low, uh, lower abdominal muscles and lift your legs off of the floor. Inhale and lift. I know Josiane's dying to go into plow position from here, but we're not going to do that today because we're going to go directly into fish posture. Let's try. No, actually, so. so Supta Parivrita, supine twist. 
Exhale very gently, slowly, control motion, release your legs down to the floor and this time bend your right leg at the knee. Place your left hand on your right knee, right hand goes on your right hip. Now push your right knee over to the left side and look to the right. Make sure your right shoulder stays connected to the floor. Keep breathing, don't forget to breathe. Inhale, extend the right leg out, bend the left leg at the knee, exhale and dip the right leg, left leg over to the right side and look to the left. I forgot to release my fancy clip, so that's getting in the way. If you have anything in your hair, you want to untangle your hair first. Inhale, let's release, let's hug ourselves, give ourselves a beautiful hug for a great job, a job well done. Rich Spezial, thank you for the wonderful setup. Danny Darrow, our director, thank you so much for flying solo today. Appreciate our great teamwork here. Josiane Hurd, on behalf of Josiane, this is Banu Suresh signing off. You are watching Yoga Express. Now, hug yourself, hug your knees into your chest, clasp your opposite knees, opposite elbows with your hands, and use a nice semi rocking motion. Give yourself a wonderful, wonderful sacral massage. <sighs> this twist that we just did, I love it. You know that. Uh, That's the, yeah, the supine the twist. The, yeah. Supta Parivrita, that is so amazing, and it feels it's, good. Actually, yeah, it you know feels what? Good. We should keep really, going in that. Yeah. I love that. Let's we keep doing it. In every every session, we should do it. Yeah, you're right because twists are really wonderful the, because they it really the back, do. And at the same time, it opens your torso. Opens up your torso, opens yes. up the side, whole side of the body. Let's keep doing that. And it's very relaxing because we're on the floor, so it is no tension at all. Right, there's no tension. That's the idea of today's sequence is just to relax. It's, it's actually part of the hypertension sequence. We just want to relax and ease off. Well, it's thank also, you for watching it's Yoga also Express. Yes. It is, right? Yes, yeah. You love all the postures, Josie. You love the fish posture. Yeah, you, because <laughs> it is. It's very relaxing. Anything that open the chest and anything that also um, the twist and the thing that helps the spine. I love it because I feel good afterwards. That's right. See, Josie's totally hyped on these postures. So stay Are with us. Long? Are we still running? She, yeah, we're still running. That's okay. We have thirty seconds. Josiane is a live example of a true yoga addict. Welcome back <laughs> to the program, Josiane. Keep coming. If you want to meet Josiane, you have to come on this program. Right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you, Danny, Rich, Josiane. Thank you for thank being you, here. <laughs>